in the hadith of Bukhari mentions the Prophet sallallahu when he used to stand up for tahajjud and when he used to go into sajda then Aisha radiallahu ta'ala says Allahu Akbar when I read this he makes me cry he says she says that the Prophet sallallahu had to touch me and to move my legs so he could do sajda why the scholars of hadith they elucidate they explain that the house the room that they lived in was so small that it, it did not accommodate one person doing sajda and another person lying down fully. So if you stood up, your, he your head would touch the ceiling. If you lie down, your feet would touch the wall. These were the rooms that they lived in. And we complain, no, no, I need three bedroom house, four bedroom house. I need which one has a living room and a la lounge and the TV room and or this room and study room and front room and the kitchen and the dining room and the balcony and the all these different things we need two bath bathrooms we need two toilets we need an suit and all the rest of it allahu akbar so what do we get lesson from the ummahatul mumini they had that subhanallah contentment this divine contentment when that comes in subhanallah then we will be successful the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to aisha radiyallahu ta'ala ana she was eating in the morning and evening because aisha to eat twice a day this is extravagant mm. allahu akbar so we want to eat breakfast, then dinner, then tea, then we have snacks, then we have supper, and Allah, and even then we are complaining. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he invited his father Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu for food. And he put forward some meat and some roti forward. So he was having, so what he did was he took the pieces of meat and he separated the fat side of it. And he said, you know, this is extravagant because this is two dishes. You can eat with the fat or you can eat with the meat. Allahu Akbar, subhanAllah. Mm. So these are lessons, alhamdulillah, what we should be doing. I'm not telling you sisters and I will do it myself or you will to do it yourself. What I'm trying to say is Allah has given us this ni'mah, express the gratitude. Alhamdulillah, alladhi at'amana wa saqana wa ja'alana muslimin. Do you know this food that comes to our plate? Just ponder over it next time, brothers and sisters, whoever's listening, just ponder, you know, the rice that we got on our plate, the roti that we got on our plate, the curry that we have, the chutney and all the different kind of things that we have. If we see the amount of effort that has gone behind all this, it's just mind boggling. Because this rice which has come, it might have come from India, Pakistan, Basmati rice, it might have come from America, then it comes you know, through and how many people have made the effort to put in the seeds, then harvesting it, then the manufacturers, then the factories and the wholesalers and the retailers, and then the natural resources which has gone into this, the wind, the rain, the sun, you know, sand, the earth, all the Anasira Arba, the, all these things have gone into the production of that rice which has come. The fruits that we eat, you will see made in Switzerland, made in France, made in Bangladesh, made in Pakistan, made, you know, pr produce of this, produce of that. So production from all different parts of the world. This meat that comes, the chicken that comes, the fish that comes, subhanallah. So that's why we say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi at'amani hadha ta'am. Warzaqani min ghayri hawlim minni walakut. That's another dua that we read. Many of us, we forget to even read one dua.